Ah yes, driving through the countryside. Windows down, music, nice and loud, just another road trip. You see a bunch of cows out the window. One of them really stands out, literally. The other cows look like black and white hamsters. The Guinness World Record for tallest cow ever goes to this cow named Blossom. This big grass guzzler was six foot four. <laughs> Somebody better buy that cow some basketball shoes. The average cow's only four foot five. Blossom must have felt like a giant. When you're that tall, you don't just hang around in a field eating grass. Blossom was the official greeter for a local resort. Big Jake. And believe me, big is an understatement. This guy got famous for being the world's tallest horse. Checking in at a whopping 6 foot 11, we're gonna need a whole lot of basketball shoes. What a stud, which actually pretty much just means male horse, so... Now what about this little cutie, the world's shortest female horse? Her name is Thumbelina. What a perfect name. And she's only about 1 foot 5. That didn't stop her from going viral though. Oh, and the shortest male horse is called Bomble. It means bubble in Polish. He's only two feet tall, but his heart is larger than life. So, so cute and shorter than a greyhound. Now, I'm a full-out dog person. Well, regular-sized dog person. Zeus, a Great Dane, was officially the world's tallest dog. Being three foot eight on all fours made you think you were looking at a small horse. Imagine that face waking you up in the morning. And what about taking him out for a walk? you'd have needed a pretty strong leash. According to his owners, he was a gentle giant and was usually laid back, luckily. And Zeus had a really important job. He was a certified therapy dog, spreading his love and joy to all in need. Imagine a dog like that. You wouldn't need to put out a water bowl every day. He could just drink straight out of the tap. Hugging would be on a whole different level, too. How much do you think that guy ate? Would he have even fit on your bed? So many questions. Now what if you're a cat person? You'd better prepare yourself. Ha! Get it? Anyway, this cool cat over here has been called the world's longest domesticated cat. His name's Baravel, which means clown, and he comes from a small town in Italy. He's a gentle giant too, which is good because he's longer than a baseball bat. When they see a photo, people usually think he's been photoshopped. He enjoys basking in the sun by the window, staring out into the backyard. Hunting mice must feel like chasing ants to him. The previous title holders were called Ludo and Stewie, the same breed as Baravel. That's a lot of cat fur on my mom's new sofa. Sheesh. Hopping up next is a rabbit named Darius. His long ears and cute button nose aren't why he's special. A regular rabbit's about 14 inches, but Darius here? Just over 50. That's basically a rabbit dog. Darius grew up on a farm in England, and living out in an open field gave him a super chill personality. Feeding him must be tough, though. Darius must be a carrot-eating machine. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Enough of the cute stuff. Time for some more exotic animals. Maybe even mythical ones. Myths are just how people explain crazy things. Like the legend of the white-lipped man. That turned out to be just me eating cheesecake. Quick and shifty under the water, able to bring down an entire ship, the Kraken was famous for disappearing ships. That's what the legends say. Probably just a sailor's tale told to scare the new recruits. But researchers may have found its baby brother. The largest ever recorded squid was almost 60 feet long, but the researchers forgot to video it. Huh, no! The largest squid ever caught on camera was about 25 feet. That's like an RV. Scientists think there might be larger ones out there, but they're kind of camera shy. The great white shark, frightening ocean animals left and right. She's called the queen of the ocean. She's not one of those kind and gentle queens, oh no. Scientists were able to tag her to study her more. This queen weighs about 3,500 pounds. That's like six motorbikes or 14,000 hot dogs. She was caught in the waters off Nova Scotia by a team of terrified researchers. 
good thing sharks only chill in the ocean. Unless… what about an episode of Shark Ninja Warriors? That was the biggest, now the longest. Good guess, but nope, definitely not a snake. But it is as long as half a football field. This animal was discovered in the deep waters off Australia. They found it there, glowing. And get this, scientists say it isn't even a single creature. It just acts like one. It's actually a whole colony, cloning and multiplying until it gets… even bigger? Its technical name… um… This next animal can move on land and water. Don't be fooled by its short scrawny legs. A crocodile can run as fast as a human on land. So if you're running a lap against these sprinters, try to climb up a tree as high as you can. Crocs can't climb trees, but you'd better believe they'll be waiting for you when you get down. They're also the heaviest reptiles in the world. An adult can weigh about the same as two small cars. The largest one in captivity was a saltwater croc in the Philippines. Lolong was his name, and he was 20 feet long. That's like two ping pong tables end to end, with a whole bunch of teeth. Slithering up next, another reptile. A beast of a serpent from Malaysia. Some workers were on break at a construction site on a hot day. They noticed something. Was it a large pipe? Well, this time, it was a snake. They pulled out the longest python ever captured. It took more than five men to carry it out of the construction site without harming it or themselves. The beast was 26 feet long and weighed around 550 pounds. That's only a bit shorter than a light post. The previous record for the longest snake in captivity was the famous Medusa, also a python. That kind of snake can eat its whole weight for lunch. That's like me eating 280 burgers. I definitely don't want fries with that. Back to the water. Behold! The heaviest blue catfish ever caught! The Andersons bagged this guy in Virginia back in 2011, and they've been bragging about it ever since. Weighing in at a whopping 143 pounds, that's like fishing a washing machine out of the lake while standing on a small boat. That's why it took both father and son to drag it on deck. Honorable mention goes to the largest living cat in the world. No, it's not a lion or a tiger, but a little bit of both. It's a liger. Ligers don't exist out in nature, since lions and tigers live in totally different parts of the world. Than wildlife parks, it's been done. Hercules holds this particular record. At over 900 pounds, he's the biggest carnivore mammal in the whole world. He's got his length from his mom, a tiger, and his weight from his dad, a lion called Arthur. Want to know what it's called when the mom is a lion and the dad's a tiger? A tigan. They're way less common than ligers, but they're just as bizarre. That sort of sounds like the ancient Greek mythical creature, the chimera. It was part lion, part goat, part snake, and some stories say it even had bat wings. Oh, and it breathed fire, too. You'd need to bring in a whole bunch of Spartan firefighters to take care of that thing. But it probably hosts a sweet barbecue party. So what about us humans? The award goes to Robert Wadlow from Illinois. He was a staggering 8 foot 11 inches, and he could pick up his dad when he was just 9 years old. Just let that sink in for a while. He ate over 8,000 calories a day, and his shoe size was 37 AA. Hey, let's take a deep dive into ocean waters to see which of these creepy looking animals are our friends. We're swimming in the tropical waters of Nanina Balava Island near Fiji. Can you see those giant creatures the size of a Volkswagen Beetle? Those are manta rays. They've got a long whip-like tail and large flat diamond bodies. There are two species of manta rays, the reef manta ray and the giant manta ray. They belong to the same family as sharks, but they only have small teeth in their lower jaw. They feed on zooplankton, tiny fish, and crustaceans. Manta rays are social animals, and they like people. Once you let them come close to you, they'll swim around you to observe you. Don't chase them, though, because they're super-fast swimmers. Their name translates to cloak or blanket. 
and out of all sea creatures, they've got the largest brain compared to body weight ratio. These fellas can recognize themselves in a mirror. The Asian sheep's head wrasse follows. Even if it seems unsightly, it's one of the friendliest fish you'll come across in the shallow waters of Japan, China, and Korea. It has protrusions on both its jaw and head. It likes to hide in its anemone, and it's usually scared to go out even at 40 inches long. One of these fellows developed a friendship with a Japanese scuba diver 30 years ago. When the diver found the fish, it was injured, and he helped it recover. The diver had been the caretaker of an underwater Shinto shrine. He calls the fish by hitting the underwater bell. Time to go swimming with the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Though these creatures are sharks, they have a lot in common with whales. They can live for 100 years, though they've got tiny brains. They're indifferent to humans. These fellows don't care about anything they can't eat. And unlike other shark species, they won't bite you. Whale sharks are filter feeders. They do have teeth, 3,000 of them, but they don't use them. They've got a massive mouth, like me. But their throat is only the size of a quarter. Next, we have the sunfish, a fish without a tail that looks like it's been cut in half. It has large fins, and when you see it breaching on the surface, you'll think a shark is approaching. The sunfish dives deep in the water to let other fish exfoliate his skin and remove parasites. Once they're done, it returns to the surface to sunbathe. It's also a voracious eater. If it sees you in the waters, it'll likely approach you and observe you. Within a day, you'll be able to feed it from the palm of your hand. Time for the animal that looks like it's always smiling, the bottlenose dolphin. It's one of the most social sea creatures, and it travels in groups. It enjoys playing, hunting, raising calves, and helping out its community. Bottlenose dolphins are excellent swimmers, with speeds reaching 19 miles per hour. They usually come up to the surface to breathe air through the blowhole on their head. These creatures are great communicators, and they send messages to each other. They use echolocation to navigate and find food. When they spot people, they become very friendly, so much that they let their guard down, and it makes them vulnerable to other sea creatures such as sharks. Heading to the Pacific coast, we'll come across some gray whales. Their skin is covered with parasites and other organisms that make their snouts look like rough pieces of rock. We gotta get on their nice side first. Gray whales can attack a large boat, a ship, or a vessel if they sense their calves are in danger. But generally, they're friendly and appear unbothered by rowing kayakers. In some cases, they'll approach small boats and allow humans to touch them, though you're required by law to keep your distance. If it wants to get closer, it will. If it feels threatened, it will act aggressively. Now, let me show you a fish with a tool on its head, the hammerhead shark. Their skull helps them with hunting. Their eyes are placed on the hammer's outer edges and gives them a 360-degree vertical view. But they've got a blind spot in front of their nose. Their heads are like metal detectors. Most of what they want is below the sand surface. So they lightly dip their heads in the sand and sweep up whatever is under there. You'll see them in temperate and tropical waters, both near the shorelines and offshore. They usually move in groups. They're mostly harmless to humans and divers, but there have been a few occasions where they got aggressive. But before they do, they'll give you a bunch of warning signs, and divers know how to handle them. Now, I'll show you something kind of smaller, the sea lion. These creatures are a bit tricky. They're playful, aggressive, arrogant, smart, and above all, curious. Sea lions can't breathe underwater, but they can dive almost a thousand feet deep, and they can hold their breath for a long time. They take in air through their nose, and once they dip their heads in the waters, their nostrils slam shut. If they spot humans at the beach, they'll stay away and wait for them to leave. Wild sea lions aren't the friendliest to anyone, especially if they feel threatened. The approachable ones have been trained in captivity. Beluga whales are next. They're white with bulgy heads, and they're amongst the most social and loudest you'll ever meet. Their upwards-facing mouths make them look like they're smiling. When beluga whales are born, they're a dark gray shade. 
It takes 8 years for their skin to turn white. They can change the shape of their heads by blowing air around their sinuses. Beluga whales love humans. Once they make human friends, they don't want to leave. Even though they're wild animals, they become too entrusting with people. Marine biologists suggest staying away for their safety. Have you heard of sea cows? Those are actually called manatees. You'll see some in rivers and others in the ocean. Even though they're large, they usually stay in shallow coastal areas, munching on seagrass, leaves, and algae. Manatees bring their heads to the surface every four minutes or so to breathe. But they can hold their breath longer than that. They're slow travelers, and even if they aren't as smart as dolphins, they can understand colors. These fellas are gentle giants, and they like to approach humans searching for warmth. Next, we've got the basking shark, the second largest shark in the world. Their mouth is their most impressive feature, like me, since it can open more than 3 feet wide. Okay, you win. These creatures have an intimidating appearance. But despite their size, they're harmless to humans, and divers swim with them. They're very social and can form schools of 100 individuals. They swim near the water surface, filter feeding on plankton. They too have a bunch of teeth that they don't use. Do you know which creature can sing loud songs for 30 minutes? I know, Barry Manatee! Hmm, that might be before your time. (laughs) Actually, it's the humpback whale. Scientists aren't sure why they make those low howls and noises. They might be trying to communicate with others to attract mates. You'll see them near coastlines, feeding on tiny food, and they use their flukes to propel through the water. Humpback whales are less friendly than gray whales because they're very cautious. But they're the heroes of the ocean. They try to save other animals from orcas. And experts say they're capable of decision-making and problem-solving. On one occasion, a humpback whale jumped in to save a whale biologist from a tiger shark. Now, let's try to spot the expert in disguise, the Caribbean Reef Octopus. The specialized color cells help it blend in with the sand and ocean rock's rough texture. But Caribbean Reef Octopuses are loners, and they like to get around on their own. This creature is also teeny tiny. It can grow almost 5 inches and, with their legs, getting as long as the average person's foot. If you get too close to them, they'll likely turn blue and warn you that they feel threatened. Even though they're trusting, it's better to keep your distance to keep them calm. A weird-looking creature walks around like a living vacuum cleaner down in the ocean's pitch-black depths. I'm talking about sea pigs. They got their name from their pinkish bodies, and they fit in the palm of your hand. These creatures don't swim, they walk around on the seafloor. Their legs consist of 5 to 7 pairs of enlarged tube feet, and they have tentacles around their mouths to fiddle through the mud to find scum to munch on. Yumbo! Since they're vulnerable, they have poisonous skin for protection against other sea creatures. If you encounter one, it'll be quite friendly, but if you want to keep it as a pet, you'll need a very deep tank. Speaking of slimy water creatures, let's talk about comb jellies. They're friendly animals that like to swim close to the shore on warm summer evenings. There are two types of comb jellies, some with two tentacles and some without any. You can spot them at night since they glow in the dark and light up the waters. One of them is the sea gooseberry. On the sand, it looks like a transparent blob of jello, and it can fit into a teaspoon. Unlike jellyfish, Comb jellies don't stink because they don't have stinging cells, and they're safe to swim with. The liger is probably the most popular hybrid animal, and an incredibly large cat. You won't see them in the wild. People most deliberately breed them. Lions and tigers don't even inhabit the same areas. So... A liger is a mix of a male lion and a female tiger, and they can grow to be very big in a pretty short period of time. They're actually the biggest cats in the world. Hercules, the largest recorded liger, is a real example of that. 922 pounds and 10.8 feet long. Imagine taking him for a walk. Ligers are mostly way bigger than either of their parents. In most cases, they behave and look more like lions than tigers. 
but they have some tiger traits too. For example, striped backs, and they're crazy about swimming. The Tigan. Nobody could fault you for thinking the Tigan and Liger are basically the same animal. I mean, they're both a combination of tigers and lions. But a Tigan comes from a crossbreeding of a male tiger and a female lion. They're usually smaller than their parents, and definitely much smaller than their giant, could you call them siblings? In most cases, they inherit charming looks from their tiger fathers, but they get some interesting traits from their mother's side too. For example, love for socialization and the ability to roar. Hands down, one of the rarest hybrid animals in the world are wolfins. These fellas are a mashup of a female bottlenose dolphin and a male false killer whale. Its name might make you think differently, but a false killer whale belongs to the dolphin family. They're not even related to killer whales. Wolfins are such an interesting 50-50 mix and balance of their parents. They have dark gray skin, the perfect blend of a black false killer whale and light gray dolphin skin. Dolphins have anywhere between 80 and 100 teeth. False killer whales have 44. And their hybrid young is halfway, with 66 teeth in total. What would it look like if algae and a slug paired? No need to imagine. You have a green sea slug to check the result. It lives in salt marshes in Canada and New England. And it's possibly the weirdest hybrid creature you'll see in this video, and in general. Part plant, part animal. So, some slugs seem to have been very sneaky while stealing the genes from innocent algae that they have eaten to enable them to look like this. Since they're partially a plant, they can produce the plant pigment called chlorophyll. That means these unusual slugs can even photosynthesize. That's the process plants use to turn sunlight into energy. So they produce their own molecules that contain energy without having to eat anything at all. When scientists first discovered it, a green sea slug was the first case of a multicellular animal that's able to produce chlorophyll. What do you get when you mix a male leopard and a female lion? you get an interesting hybrid called a lepin. These animals grow to be almost as big as lions, but they still have shorter legs, similar to their father leopard. They inherit some of his other traits too, like a love for climbing and swimming. You can have a union with a male lion and a female leopard too, and the result is called a lipard. Male lions are usually around 10 feet long and weigh about 500 pounds. The female leopard is way smaller, only five feet long with a weight of about 80 pounds. The difference in size here is too big, so this pairing really doesn't happen that often. Okay, how about a buffalo and a cow? When you were little, maybe you thought that they could be a good match. But in reality, the combination creates an unusual hybrid animal called a beefalo. Not many types of hybrid animals can reproduce on their own, but a beefalo can do it. When a grizzly and a polar bear get together, it results in a growler bear, or bisley bear, or grizzlar, whichever you like the most. You can see them even in the wild. These two types of bears have a mutual contempt for one another. Yep, they're not good at living together in a mutual habitat. But even though it's rare, the love can still happen and result in these cute caramel-colored hybrid growler bears. In most cases, they'll be a bit smaller than polar bears, on average, 60 inches tall at the shoulder. An approximate weight, 1,000 pounds. But they're well equipped for surviving in warmer climates, thanks to the genes they got from their grizzly family side. Now let's get to one pretty tough fella, the jag lion. As its name implies, it's the hybrid of a jaguar and a lion. We don't know much about these intriguing big cats because only a few of them exist. But there was an unintentional mixing between a black jaguar and a lioness which eventually resulted in two jag lion cubs. One had a dark gray coat with black spots because of the dominant melanin gene black jaguars usually have. The other one had a lion color and the rosette pattern spots that remind you of a jaguar. Yep, you already know it. There are also liguars, a hybrid of a female jaguar and a male lion. That's some colorful family. Speaking of wild cats, have you ever heard of a savanna cat? Savannah cats are in both categories of house pets and exotic hybrids, since they're a mix of a domestic cat and a wild African serval hybrid animal. We're talking about striking animals, almost as big as a domestic cat. 
But what gives them their exotic look are their tall bodies, slender forms, and spotted coats. These cats are extremely loyal, intelligent, and loving creatures. Here's one unexpected mixture, a zebroid. Technically, it's a name people use to describe a hybrid of a zebra and any equine species. But when you pair a zebra and a horse, their young is called a zorse. Zebra hybrids mostly look like whichever animals they've been crossbred with, but with the striped coat of a pure zebra. Most of these hybrid creatures don't even have fully striped coats. You can mostly see the stripes on non-white areas of their bodies and legs. Speaking of zebra hybrids, check out this adorable creature. It's called a zonkey, or zedonk, zebras, zanky, eh, take your pick. They're mostly either tan, gray, or brown in color. You'll distinguish them by unique stripes that are darkest on their legs and belly. Unlike some hybrids, such as the liger, zonkeys can normally live in the wild. In fact, that's where you can find them, living life to the fullest across savannas and open woodland, mostly in Africa. Can you guess what a geep is? Yep, a combination of goat and sheep, and definitely one of the most adorable and cuddliest hybrid creatures in this video. Geeps are very rare. Some experts even believe it's possible that they're not true hybrids, but just sheep with certain genetic abnormalities. After all, sheep and goats do carry different numbers of chromosomes, which means cross-species mixes are almost impossible. When a camel and a llama get together, you get a cute little thing called a comma. Similar to beefalo, the comma also produces the best economic traits of both its parents. The first one was born in 1998. Commas don't have camel humps. Their body is covered in soft, fleecy fur, similar to their llama side of the family. They can drink big amounts of water at a time, so they can survive with almost no water at all for pretty long periods. The Koi Wolf is a hybrid where nothing looks that unusual to most people, since the coyote and the wolf are not that drastically different in their looks. After all, these two species only diverged around 200,000 years ago. Now they're still able to mate and bring koi wolf cubs to the world. People living in eastern Canada and the US might be familiar with these smart adaptable animals that inhabit their forests, neighborhood parks, or sometimes even cities. These hybrids have emerged over the past century or so. And they've picked up the characteristics of both their parents. When a koi wolf is fully grown, it's somewhere in between the size of both parents. But it's also 55 pounds heavier than pure coyotes, and has a bigger jaw, longer legs, smaller ears, and a bushier tail. Check out the narluga, an extremely rare creature whose parents are a narwhal and a beluga whale. It's a pretty strange animal, but far from being lonely, they mostly live in the North Atlantic. Scientists had suspected their existence for decades. In 1990, they found an unusual-looking whale skull located in an Inuit hunter's tool shed in Greenland. People from that area said that there were other similar-looking animals, and they fit the description of neither a beluga whale nor a narwhal. People said they had gray skin, narwhal-like tails, and beluga-like flippers. Narwhals and beluga whales are similar in size, and they share a family, the Monodontidae family. So it may not even be that surprising that they're able to successfully breed in the wild.